We are but a small city-state in the Baltics, bordered to the south by the Livonians and the city-state of Riga to the east. We are confined to our coast. We are insignificant to the European order and at the mercy of stronger powers surrounding us. To remain as we are would spell an inevitable doom for our nation. However, there is a solution. Stories of a new world, free from the squabbles of Europe and promising riches beyond measure, a means to secure a future of the Koronian people. However, it will be a difficult journey to get there, and our king is skeptical of these rumors, believing that we should instead focus on developing what we have. So we began by investing into the economy, followed by the king sending out diplomats to our neighbors to ensure good relations, which would be essential to our survival. But as we continued with our development, a shocking news would derail our efforts. Also, Viek to the north had declared war on us. Without wasting a second, our king mustered what troops he could from our city and sent them across, only for the invasion to end in failure. We managed to barely recover, building a new army and just managing to take Kurisar. In the peace treaty, we annexed the territory, adding it to our kingdom. However, the closely fought war has shown our king that as long as we remain a small kingdom, our nation will always be on the edge of death leading him to organize an expedition, sending ten of his best sailors to explore and circumnavigate the world in the name of Corland. After many tedious months of sailing, we found it, land. We encountered a small tribe who called themselves the Carib. We immediately created a trading post and began learning the language, sending men to document their tribe and their lands. We have managed to set up a colony on an island near the Carib. And in that time, the Carib, through their interactions with us, had become more centralized and had civilized from a tribe to a kingdom. Our explorers also discovered another native kingdom further south called the Arawak, who had also civilized and was now at war with the Carib. Our colonial governor, sensing the opportunity to increase our foothold on the mainland, declared war on the Carib successfully taking over their country and securing a new ally in the Arawak. We immediately began to assimilate the natives into our superior culture, and in the meantime, our explorers had already found our next location for expansion. This time even further south, where we encountered another two native kingdoms. However, before we could even establish formal contact with either, the Tupinamba were attacked by another kingdom to the south, Seeing our chance, we pounced, with our army attacking both kingdoms, taking advantage of their weakness from war. We managed to push deep into the Amazon before threatening the Wara kingdom for military access to complete our conquest and capitulate the Tupiniquium. In the peace treaty, we annexed Tupinamba and vassalized the, the other tribe before subsequently demanding their annexation. Whilst these events had been going on, our explorers had continued on their mission discovering new civilizations around the world. We made contact with the Malians, Dahomey, Benin, Congo, Aden, and most significantly, the Ming, who didn't like us that much. And with that, our explorers had completed their goal, the circumnavigation of the world. And with this glorious news, our king declared that South America, where our empire began, shall be our complete focus going forward and conquered in the name of Corland. First, the Wara. Then the Charua people further down south. Then came the Mapuche. Then Kula, Charka, and Pacajes. As we were conquering the natives, worrying news arrived from our westernmost territories that interrupted everything. The Cusco, a strong regional power, had declared war on us and had already begun seizing our territories in an attempt to throw us off the continent. We desperately tried to put up a defense, 
but our meager forces were overrun by their numbers. As the Cusco celebrated their victories, our king vowed that he would have his revenge on them for their senseless attack. Using every last bit of wealth we could spare, we mustered an army from the eastern colonies to retake our lands and enact vengeance on the Cusco. We began with the naval invasion and expanded our foothold, taking both Cusco territory and retaking ours. The Cusco would attempt to surprise us by a naval invasion from behind, but we held our ground and continued pushing into their territory, slowly taking it back. Realizing that their army was weak, we took our chances and decided to push into the north as well, attempting to take on the entirety of Cusco. The war is over. Celebrations spread across our empire as we achieve our greatest victory yet. In the peace treaty, we vassalized Cusco before later demanding an annexation using the same strategy as before. However, our governors became concerned as our sudden expansion to new peoples has resulted in widespread instability. We will have to put a pause on expansion and deal with this immediately to avoid a revolt. But even before we could begin restoring stability, a tribe to the north attacked us, attempting to take advantage of our precarious position. Using the few remaining troops that we had, we managed to defeat them, but this has only further increased our sense of urgency to assimilate these people. It took us a while, but we have finally restored stability. We can now finish what we started. We've done it. South America is ours. We are now the undisputed power in South America, and the future of our nation is secure. Thank you for watching, and comment down below if you would like to see a part 2 to this video.